my pride I would choke on the rhymes But the lack thereof would leave me empty inside Swallow my doubt, turn it inside out Find nothing but faith in nothing While I put my tender heart in a blender Watch it spin around to a beautiful oblivion Rendezvous, then I'm through with you I burn, burn like a wicker cabinet Shark white and old so frail I see our time has gotten stale The tick-tock of the clock is painful All sane and logical I want to tear it off the wall I hear words in clips and phrases I think sick like ginger ale My stomach turns and I exhale I would swallow my pride I would choke on the rhymes But the lack thereof would leave me empty inside I would swallow my doubt, turn it inside I'll find nothing but faith in nothing Wanna put my tender heart in a blender Watch it spin around to a beautiful oblivion Rendezvous in a But faith in nothing Wanna put my tender heart in a blender I can spin around to a beautiful oblivion Rendezvous and I'm through with you Hey, this is Chris from Jamplay.com here with an Eve 6 song for you called Inside Out. And uh, we're going to be working on every aspect of this song. Every guitar part, uh, singing and playing at the same time, rhythm, lead, some effects. And then we're also going to take an approach that uh, is a little bit more of a stripped down approach and that will be coming at it from more of just you and your guitar. Not necessarily trying to emulate every portion of the song, but just taking the song as a whole and, and playing it. So there's a lot that's, that's, uh, that you're going to be able to take away from this lesson in terms of just very subtle techniques and uh, chord changes and stuff like that. This is a great song for those of you who are starting to get a little bit more comfortable with your basic chords and your bar chords and who want to start possibly writing your own music. So I hope you guys enjoy this lesson. We're going to get started with the intro guitar which is the first chorus of the song. The song starts on the chorus in the next scene. All right, for this piece of the song, you're going to want a clean sound on your guitar. And uh, I'm using the bridge pickup. And let me go over the chords for you real quick. For some of you, this will be a review. For others, maybe you're learning these chords and this is an opportunity for you to cement them in your mind. So the first chord is going to be an A, just a standard A. I'm playing this with, uh, with these three fingers because I feel like I have more room on the, 
on the fret to do so. Of course, however you're comfortable, as long as you get all of the strings ringing out is good. You're not going to be playing your low E string, but again, all three fingers on the second fret, strings two, three, and four. Regular open A sound. Next one is going to be a regular E chord. And again, I'm using, I'm playing without my, my first finger, just to give me a little bit more room, but however is comfortable for you is fine. Okay, then we're going to move to an A formation or an A shape B chord. So a double bar. And the only thing is, is you're not going to include, as I just played, the highest string. You're going to include just your uh, fifth string through your second string. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm barring second fret with my first finger, and then I'm choosing to use my fourth finger, and I'm bending, bending my pinky so that it, it works with that bar chord. Some people play it like this, other people play it like this, whatever's comfortable for you. Okay, so, so far we've got A, E, and B in kind of an A formation. The reason I say A formation is because it's actually an A chord form, but you're barring it up two frets. Okay? Uh, the next chord that you're going to need to learn is this chord, which is an F sharp major chord, and it is in E form. So you're basically taking E, again you can kind of see why I'm using this fingering here, taking an E chord and you're putting it up two frets and you've got your F sharp major chord. Okay? Uh, so getting familiar with that movement, as you'll see in a moment when I demo the intro, sometimes it's kind of hard to keep those chords connected as you're playing. So keep in mind, practice the movements around. Okay? The last chord we're going to be using is a variation on a B. This first B form that, we, that I taught you is only used the first time the chord is played on the intro. After that, it's played as a B sus chord, okay? Which is sort of the same thing. Uh, you're gonna have first finger, fifth, fr fifth string, second fret, and then the other two fingers here are gonna be on your fourth fret on the D and G strings. And then these are gonna be open. You're gonna strum all the way through, okay? So those are the chords that you're going to need to going to need to know. This is a very simple intro. You're playing whole notes. Maybe you're singing along. Maybe you've got a buddy you singing along or whatever. But the point is, is you want these chords to ring out. So be sure you're following along in the supplemental materials to get exact timings and fret positions and stuff like that in the tablature. Everything has been tabbed out for you. So. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play through the intro guitar, the, really the clean stuff, until it gets distorted. Play through it slowly, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. And at that point, the big distorted guitars come in, and we'll be going over that in just a second. Uh, a couple things of note. When the song starts, he's going to do a downstroke, and then he's going to, that's going to be muted with his left hand, and then he's going to take his hands off, and then just let the sound of the open guitar happen as this upstroke's going as he frets that first A chord. Okay, so that's going to sound like this. Okay. Then after that, you've got uh, two chords held out for half notes, followed by one held out as a whole note. So, in other words, you're going to be changing chords twice on a measure, and then you're going to be following that by changing chord by holding a chord for the entire measure. So, you've got your A chord, two for two beats. So let me count it as I play it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So good chord warm up. Good opportunity to cement the uh, the transition between open chords and bar chords. And the thing to remember is just make sure that everything is is clean and connected. So that is the intro guitar. Now we're going to go on to the bass distorted rhythm that you hear throughout the song. Okay, so this is the bass rhythm for the song, and this happens on all the verses and choruses after that first chorus. And uh, you're going to need a little bit more distorted of a sound now, a distortion box or a second channel on your amp, still on the same pickup configuration. and. Uh, this is really a power chord exercise, you know, there's a lot, a lot of power chords going on. So uh, we were using a little bit more open chords and full chords in the first chorus. Now we're transitioning to mainly power chords. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play through the rhythm slowly and then we're going to talk about the different chord positions that we're going to be using. So that's the whole first verse. And uh, the chord position you're, you're using, really you're only using one type of position, and that is the power chord. And you're moving this shape around. Now you do throw in an open E, and you also throw in uh, an open G5 chord, uh, which I'll go over here in a second. But uh, So here's the position. First finger on your A string, followed by your third and fourth fingers on the strings directly below it, the, uh, the D and the G strings, okay? And if you practice moving this shape around, uh, you can do a lot with that, and that's essentially what, what we're doing here in this verse. You're also going to be moving this up to, you know, down one set of strings. So you basically take everything, shift it up a string, move it up, move it down. Okay, so with that in mind, you start with a B power chord, played twice, then you go down to an F sharp power chord, played twice again, up to an A power chord, down to a G power chord, back to the B, F sharp, and that's when you hit your open E. Scrape your strings, back to the B. Now, what I just played happens twice, not that little short thing, but the other one, uh, happens twice. And then uh, on, upon the third repetition, when you transition to the chorus, you hit that G at the end. So this, this G5 chord is uh, your first finger, or sorry, second finger on your, your low E string. And then your third and fourth fingers are going to come down here on your B and your E strings. It's a nice open sound. Now this is, a, this is also a five chord, so it's still sort of considered a power chord. There's no third in it. You're going to be muting with your second finger here. You're going to be muting your A string. Okay, and then once you strum that at the end, then you transition into the chorus. Okay, so I'm going to play just that back half, the last section of chord progression until you, uh, you reach that chorus. So instead of going to the E, you go to the G, basically. Okay, so those are the chords, the positions, the names of the chords. Uh, now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the subtleties in this rhythm and what makes it really groove with the drums and 
makes it a little bit more unique sounding, you know? It's very easy when we start playing chord progressions and songs, it's very easy to just kind of fret the song, fret the chords, you know? And not really pay much attention to the subtleties and the rhythms and the, when you stop the chord, when you start the chord, stuff like that. So let's look at this section uh, once, you, once you've gotten these positions down and let's look at the intricacies behind what makes this recognizable as an Eve 6 song and not just a bunch of chords. Okay, so first off, we're hitting this, this hard twice and then there's a rest. Okay, uh, so you're, you're muting it. Okay, you can mute it by hitting your, uh, or gently touching the strings with your palm and this finger, or in this hand, at the same time. Do not have your hand too far back. Uh, it's actually not happening for me right now, but if my guitar was up louder, you might end up getting some interesting notes or feedback or, you know, you hear that little ooh thing going on there. Okay, you want it to be a seamless, quiet. When you're getting into it, sometimes you might also hit it with your pick, so it might be a little bit more of a slap mute. So that's something to work on. Basically with the slap mute, you're hitting the strings with the palm of your hand, or the side of the palm of your hand, and you're kind of simultaneously picking. Okay, so there's, there's what you want to do on the rests, anytime you see a rest in the tablature on, in this verse. The other thing is the, just the scratch. There's an awful lot of scratching going on, and they're strategically placed to kind of drive the rhythm home. So, if you look at the second measure of the tablature, you notice it does this. There's a, there's a, uh, an, a bunch of X's, which I want you to play in an upstroke, and then you're going to change the chords. So it's going to be mute, and then upstroke with the, uh, with the strings muted, and then you're going to go to the F sharp. Okay, so... A lot more interesting than just... Right? So, if you look at the tablature, there's quite a few areas where that happens. I'm going to play this, the first part of that rhythm again, and you can see, pay careful attention to how I'm muting the strings and how I'm on an upstroke. They're, they're always happening on an upstroke, um, with the exception of what I will talk about in a minute. But let me go ahead and play this for you here. Right? You notice I'm getting that muted upstroke and then going back down. I'm not doing it perfectly, but sometimes it's, it's, it's very easy to accidentally get other strings in there. Um, now, there's two other strategically placed scratches that come in, and that is, and you look at the tab again for exact timing, but what happens is, is you'll get done with a little phrase, and then everything will be muted, and then you'll hear this, this chunk, you know, like a going on. And when you listen to the full version of the song, you really hear those, and they really drive the rhythm. So keep that in mind as I'm playing through this first section. So learn the chords, learn the tab, and really focus on your phrasing, how you're, how you're picking these chords, where you're scratching. Um, that's going to help take these seemingly normal chord shapes and put it into that Eve 6 style realm. Okay? So uh, next we're going to be covering the second verse. We're going to jump ahead instead of doing the chorus because we've got, we've got you in this mode. Uh, there's just some slightly subtly different things that happen in the second verse um, that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on unless you're really listening for. So we're going to go ahead and cover the second verse in the next scene. <laughs> 